welcome to another video with Mal. Today we are looking at my to be read pile of comics I have. I keep picking them up from the comic book store. Um, my local one is called Abstract Sprocket um, and I keep not reading them so I want to kind of go over why I want to read them again so in hopes I will actually read them. So we're going to go through everything I picked up. It is quite a hefty pile um, in the last like two months maybe three i just keep picking them up and they're not reading them guys i've been really bad about my comic consumption i think it's like the stress of everything around uh with covid and whatnot and going back to work and stuff like that but i haven't had a chance to even look at them again so i want to show you guys what i've been picking up in case you guys are interested in them as well uh maybe you want to share your favorite comic with me if they're along the same vein as any of these ones so let's have a look at what i've been picking up and i have read some of the series but not all of it yet so the first uh things we have to share with you um are from omni press which are the Gretzko comics. I have read the first two. The first one was about a mysterious C virus and it happened to come out right when the UK was going in lockdown. Great job there. <laughs> um, a Gretzko, if you've not read them before, is based on the TV show that's on Netflix and that is based on a Sanrio character that was in like one minute shorts in Japan before that. Uh, she is a character that works in an office and when she gets angry she turns in to this and she sings death metal um it's a very kind of great comic for like getting across what it's like to actually be at work um especially in i think she's an accounting firm in japan um and kind of the things that happen to annoy you at work really um she things best metal to kind of get over her stress and I think that's kind of a really good way of her coping. Um, she always takes a little bit too much on her plate um, but there's some really great characters in Agretzko as well. Um, there's a guy that really likes her called Haida. He's really great in there. There's Finica. Uh, she's a fox that is friends with Agretzko and she always has like the best lines literally she's the best one in it um but yeah the comics do really follow the same vein as the tv show so if you like the tv show you'll probably love the comic i think it is a limited series though i don't think it's going on for long periods but it's really great to see that in comic form and i have been really liking them they have been the same kind of tone as the tv show so if you like the tv show definitely check out the comics and if you haven't watched like the one minute a Gretzko um, shorts that were played in Japan on um, like between commercials do look on YouTube because you can find lots of them with the translation with them into English um, so if you don't speak Japanese you can still watch them and most of them are kind of self-explanatory with even just in Japanese so it's worth a watch um, some of it is very similar to the first season of the show on Netflix but most of it is very different uh, the next thing we have is we had a special issue of Man Eater um this is a great comic to pick up i love how this is packaged it makes it look like it's an envelope um all the man eaters comics have been very kind of interesting packaging most of them kind of look like magazines um and it's been a really cool way of doing things uh if you don't know what man eaters is man eaters deals with women turning into man eating uh cats when they have their monthly visitor um if you don't know what that is i'm not going to explain it to you um but it's a great kind of uh comic about women's issues and about ways uh women are treated it also looks at ways of how men are not able to be feminine at all in society it's a really great comic i really enjoy it um it's definitely worth checking out I'm trying to remember who publishes this one. Oh, it's image i thought it was image um, but definitely check this out. They've done some special issues as well. I think the series is done now, but you should be able to get in a trade pa paperback, and I really do recommend it. Most of the comic covers for it were very interesting kind of things, um, so do check them out. They're really cool-looking comics. I think even the trade looked really neat. It had lots of, like, rainbow colors on it, and it's very pretty, but there's kind of really shocking elements in the comic. It's a very mature comic. I do think it is oh no it's just teen plus i thought it was 18 plus but it's teen plus so a bit different than Leah Gretzko, which is an all age but uh man eaters i do really recommend i have enjoyed reading that comic i just not read the last issue um the special special delivery issue of it um but yeah it's definitely worth reading 
The next thing I've been very interested in reading, and I haven't read the full comic yet, but I did read the Free Comic Book Day issue of it, and I loved it. Uh, this is the main reason I went down my comic shop with the quarantine to get this free comic. I was so desperate to get it because I love Kimberly from the Power Rangers. I loved when they did the issue of uh, Pink, the Power Ranger comic, just about Kimberly after she was in the Power Rangers and where she had to form her own Ranger team at last minute. Uh, and this is about the Ranger Slayer, the road to the Ranger Slayer. And Kimberly is the Ranger Slayer. So there's been a lot happening in Power Rangers comics. I'm not going to spoil too much, guys. But it has been a very interesting time to be a Power Rangers fan. There's lots of kind of new ideas coming out about the Power Rangers. Uh, the original Rangers, not kind of like any of the spin-off series. These are original OG Rangers we're talking about here. But there's been a lot of... Uh, different things happening. The whole Grid series has been really great, guys. If you haven't read any of it, I do really recommend it. I love the idea of an evil Kimberly in this. It is such a cool idea. Uh, Tommy is also evil in it, so they kind of go together. Um, but yeah, this is kind of your starter comic. It does kind of give you some ideas about it. And you've also got in here, um, Bulk is like her sidekick, which I do love. And look how cool Kimberly looks. Look at her. Look at her with her cool hair. She looks so awesome in this comic. Uh, it's a completely different look than the original Kim, of course. But she looks so cool. Let's see if I can find a really good picture. Because I know there's a really great kind of like picture of her. Ah, that one. Look at how cool Kimberly looks, guys. Look at her. She's amazing looking in that. Completely different than the 90s Power Rangers were used to but I like a new take on it. Um, so this is Ranger Slayer number one. Um, my comic book store had a really cool holographic cover. Was a little bit more expensive but look how amazing it is. It's her helmet. Oh, it's so cool. It's hard to come up on camera though guys but yeah it's pink holographic material and this is Ranger Slayer number one. You can see on the back kind of kind of a more standard cover there. But yeah, it's by Boom Comics if you guys um, aren't sure where to find the Power Rangers one. Uh, we've also got, this is kind of like following on, this is like a side series to what's going on in my universe with Power Rangers. Um, as you can see, we've got Aisha and Adam as part of the team and Rocky is part of the team now. Um, but we have Enemy of My Enemy. And we've got an advertisement for Ranger Slayer on there. Look how cool she looks! I love her outfit! And this fact that, like, she's taking down people with her uh, bow and arrow. That is supposed to be Trini. Doesn't she look cool? And that is meant to be Zack, I believe. I believe that's Zack. Because Zack was in the series. That might not be Zack, actually. But that's definitely Trini. Uh, she's part of the Ranger Slayer comic. And she is really cool in it. Okay, the next thing I have is a couple issues of Wicked Things. This is by John Allison. Uh, he did Giant Days, and this is a spin-off series of one of the characters that was featured in Giant Days. I've not read very many of these. I only read the first issue, so I don't know kind of where this is headed, but it seems like a great comic, and I do love uh, John Anderson's work, Allison's work, so please do check it out if you have the opportunity. Next one, I'm really disappointed I haven't read this yet because I definitely picked it up for a reason. That is Negan Lives. Oh, so we got this as kind of, I think it was like Image Comics was kind of thinking about how hard hit everybody has been in like the situation with the uh, pandemic and the lockdown and also the end of Walking Dead. You don't think it makes a difference to comic book stores, but it did. It's like one of those comics that everybody always came in each week to get. And without that on the shelves, it made it a lot harder for small businesses to kind of... Uh, survive really so they did i think this is going to be a one-off as far as i know uh negan lives by robert kirkman i have not read it yet i need to read it negan is not my favorite character from the walking dead but i am willing to follow his story as well you guys know like my favorite character probably from the comic is probably michonne um because we don't have carol in the comic she's been dead for years and years um, and you don't have Daryl either, but I do like Michonne's story in the comics. I think it's a very interesting story. Um, also loved Andrea until we lost her as well, but I'm 
I'm pretty happy to see Negan actually having a comic story of his own because I think he's a very interesting character and he could support his own series. Okay, another thing I picked up was a My Little Pony comic. This was a free comic book day comic. Another one I really wanted to get. I used to read a lot of My Little Pony comics. Uh, this is featuring a cheese sandwich whose voice actor is Weird Al, who I also love. Uh, but I used to read a lot of the Pony comics, so I kind of wanted this as kind of um, going back to it. And it says season 10 starts here, so they're continuing on the Pony, pony series in comic form, which is really cool. Another thing I got is, and this is the first issue of the series, is Rick and Morty Go to Hell. Um, reminds me of um, Bill and Ted Going to Hell. Similar kind of idea, I think. But I've really enjoyed the Rick and Morty comics I've read. Um, I haven't read all of them, but I have read quite a lot of the like smaller series they've done. Uh, there was one series where they uh, had like a Pokemon-like spin-off. And uh, Nuka Wasumi spin off in it, and it was a really good series. So I was looking forward to this again because they are quite funny, and they are as funny as a TV show. So it is worth checking out if you haven't already. And just looking at the comics that are advertised on the back as well, because there looks like some really good things on here. So I'll just show you guys as well some really good comics coming out as well. I like Mooncakes. That looks cute. It looks like something I'd read. This one I haven't read, but I'm, I've been told it's quite violent, but um, I really like the cover and that's why I bought it. I think this is one of those ones I was in the comic book store and I was like, that looks cool. I like the cover of it. And sometimes you do that. Uh, this one's called uh, Sleeping Beauties. It's by Stephen King and Owen King. So this is a Stephen King book. Um, I think Owen King is his son, if I believe correctly. Um, it says, a bizarre sleeping sickness has fallen over the world. Strangers of all, the only affects women. Kind of like man-eaters, these things only affect women. In the small town of Drooling, a mysterious woman has walked out of the woods, leaving a trail of carnage behind her. Why is she the only woman not falling asleep? Ooh, scary. Um, looks like there was a, a best-selling novel that went along with this. I don't remember seeing that novel. But look how cool that cover is, guys. I love that, with like the moss covering her face. It's very cool. This is the back as well. Um, so yeah, this is one I picked up purely based on the cover and the name on it. I do like Stephen King's work. Um, I haven't read everything by him, but The Green Mile is one of my favorite books. So I thought I'd give this a chance. Oh, I did have another Wicked Things. I missed that one. That was number one. I have had a look at through that one, but that's the other one. So that's the other John Allison comic. Teen Detective of the Year. Um, another one I've really been interested in, I've only read like the first couple issues of it, and this is kind of like a spin-off series from the first one, is Glow. Uh, the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. I love the Netflix show. It is really great. Um, so I was really happy to see it come in comic form. It is just as fun as it is on the show. Oh, we got pretty much the same. Is it the same? Oh, it is different issues. Yeah, so why do they have the same on the back? Oh, it's literally like the same blurb on the back. How boring is that? You would think they do different ones. So this is the blurb on the back. It's exactly the same on both of them. Women of Glow are preparing for all new sort of foe, a new anchor. A news anchor. They all learn the art of promo to convince the media that Glow isn't a bad influence on children. Much bigger problem. A runway. A runaway who's been living in the ring. Mm, that's probably a Mark Maron's daughter in it. Um, definitely check out Glow and definitely check out the comic series. I really love these co covers. I think they were done. I'm trying to remember the name of the comic artist that had very similar covers to this that I also bought not too long ago. It will probably come to me. I'm looking down at the name, but I don't recognize it. So those are the, the names of the people that made it, but I don't recognize their name. I can't remember the name of the comic. But there's one that looks very similar. It's got similar colors to this. Um... Yeah, I can't remember the name right now, but there is a very similar comic that I've owned before that's like that one. Um, and then the last thing I picked up is the Lunar Brothers Girls. Now, this is the same people that, m that brought you Alex and Ada. I really love that comic. It was one of the first comics I ever read, um, and this is volume one. I have not touched it yet. But I picked it up basically, like, I was in the comic book store, I saw the illustration, I immediately went, that looks cool. And then I realized it was the same people that did Alex and Ada. And that's why it looks cool. Because I like that style of comic. 
Um, it says the Lunar Brothers of the Future Comics is happening right now. Uh, it doesn't really tell you too much. Oh, Ethan Daniels is a small town bachelor who suffers from one infallible truth. Dealing with the opposite sex can be complicated. One night he bumps into a beautiful, mysterious woman who will change his life and maybe even the world. Awesome. But look how cool that illustration looks. I love the way her kind of hair is all over the place and how beautiful she is, really. So those are the comics I have picked up and unfortunately not read yet. I am very tempted to go read one now, actually. I might have to do that. That might be a good idea. I might go read... Um, actually go read Sleeping Beauties. I might go read that one first. I'm kind of intrigued by it now. Reading it again, I might go do it. Um, or finish Man Eaters. I don't know. I, I feel like I need to go read a comic now. So that's a really good thing that actually showing you guys those made me want to go read them. Um, so what comics have you guys been reading? What are you interested in right now? The problem for me is a lot of the series I was kind of really into and enjoyed finished. So I don't have as many comics to go to the comic book store for anymore. Walking Dead came to an end. I miss it greatly. Uh, Squirrel Girl came to an end. I miss it greatly. Uh, and it means that I don't have as much reason to go to the comic book store as often. I am still into some things um, like Power Rangers. I do enjoy that comic and Gretzko is a continuing series and I think Glow is continuing at the moment as well. They've been around for a few months now. So I think that will probably continue onwards but I don't have that kind of comic series that I absolutely have to go to the shop for every month. There's no kind of Walking Dead or Squirrel Girl that I'm like dying to find out what's about to happen to them just isn't and I don't know I think the comic market's changing a lot I'm reading a lot more omnipress I used to read a lot more marvel I can't really find any marvel books I'm interested in at the moment and that's too bad I think they're missing out on a big audience at the moment that enjoys just kind of a laid back more kind of relaxed kind of comic and they're not doing those anymore it's just too bad really um but thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, and I hope you are having a really great October and the lead up to Halloween. This is my favorite month of the year. Get spooky, guys. And have fun. Bye. Hi, I'm a ghost. I didn't mean to scare you there. I just wanted to tell you about a book I really like called Becoming Death that you might want to check out if you love spooky things around Halloween just like me. The book is by Melissa Brown, or as you may know her, Fangirl Mel, and you can buy it on Amazon. It's a book. Oh my god. It's a book. Uh, Becoming Death by Melissa Brown. You can find it on Amazon. It's about Grim Reapers. Wow. Those are really scary, don't you think? So you find out what happens when your whole family are Grim Reapers and you gotta become one as well. Sounds spooky to me. Might be something you might enjoy this Halloween season. Don't be too scared, like me. I'm always scared of everything. Alright, thanks for watching guys!